Hi, everybody. Oh. <laughs> so like Faina mentioned, I'm Alex, and this summer I interned with Coca-Cola of Northern New England. Just a quick show of hands, how many people in here drink Coke products? OK, a lot of us. I'm not surprised. It's pretty delicious. <laughs> but um, at the London Dairy Production Center, it takes just under 1.6 liters of water to make one liter of Coke. And when you compare that to other soft drink bottlers across the country or the world, that's already one of the best ratios around. But the goal of my project was to improve that even more. So before I get into it, I just want to talk a little about the company. So Coca-Cola's mission is to be the best bottler in the Northeast. And then their vision is to achieve sustainable long-term growth. And the three ways they focus on that are through people, planet, and profit. So as far as people go, our company wants to make sure that we create a work environment where everyone is inspired to be the best that they can be. And a lot of our staff volunteers for different organizations like charities and nonprofits, including the Special Olympics, the Jimmy Fund, and the American Red Cross. And the co-company has partnerships with these same groups and supports them through product donations, sponsorships, and promoting awareness through their market presence. As far as the planet goes, in the last several years, Coca-Cola has tried to reduce its energy consumption at the bottling plant, as well as increase its recycling efforts. So last July, they achieved a 96% recycling rate, and the 4% of materials that weren't recycled were compacted and sent to a waste energy facility. They also do a lot of community outreach and education to talk to their customers about the importance of recycling and encourage them to do so. And obviously, Coke is a business, so as far as profit goes, if you want to grow a business, you need to make money. So the project that I was brought on for this summer was to map out how much water they use in their entire production process. And there are a few different ways I did that. The first method was through a flow meter. So that's basically just a computer screen on certain machines, and it tells you the flow rate at that certain point. The most common method I used was the bucket and stopwatch. So you put a container under a drain on the machine and time how long it takes to fill. And then from that, you know the flow rate. And finally, I did calculations based on pipe size and pressure. So this is a picture of the Dasani skid. It's how they make Dasani in the plant. And first, there's minerals in the tank, and then water's added to it. And then from there, the concentrated water is sent to a larger contact tank where it's further diluted to make your actual Dasani product. So I had to find the flow rate of water into the skid and then from the skid into the larger tank, and then finally the flow rate of water into the larger tank to make your product. And I did the same thing throughout the entire facility. So why is this important? Obviously, water is essential for life, and it's a scarce resource. So if there's a drought and water becomes more scarce, then the company will face water shortages. So the price of water will increase, and in an extreme case, there might not be enough available to produce everything that they need to. They'll also face community concerns from local residents. So as a company that's trying to grow sustainably, you want to ensure to the people that live in the areas you do business in that you're using their resources efficiently and responsibly. Some of the things that the company's done to mitigate these problems were this summer they hired me for the water mapping project. And several years ago, they implemented a reclaim tank to capture rejected water. So this tank just collects water that isn't pure enough to be put into actual products. So once the water is collected, it's used for other things in the facility, like cooling and refrigeration, irrigation, or general facility cleaning. They've also converted their bottle line conveyors to use waterless lubricant. And finally, they're installing an automatic filter in their water treatment room. So right now in their water treatment room, there are four of these dual media filters. And they need to be replaced soon. They're over 20 years old. It's an old technology, and there's sediments in there. So they filter water through gravel and anthracite. And the company's switching over to this newer technology that uses a lot less water, and there's just screens in the filters rather than sediments. So they knew that newer filter uses less water, but they weren't sure what the cost would be. So I conducted a benefit cost analysis over the span of 20 years, which included startup costs, operation costs, and maintenance costs. So my two biggest findings from the summer were that over a 20-year span, the new filter would save the company over $250,000, and they would also save approximately 1.4 million gallons of water every year. So that's the end of my project. My project with Coca-Cola is finished.
But once they install the new filter, I'll follow up with them to see what their actual cost and water savings will be compared to what I projected. And this was a great experience for me to work for a large company and be exposed to the culture there. And it was also very refreshing to see an industry leader like Coca-Cola care about the resources that they use. So hopefully I can use my degree from UNH to work for a company that cares as much about their footprint as Coke does. And finally, I just want to thank Coca-Cola of Northern New England for the opportunity, as well as the social innovation team for making it possible. And thank you all for listening.